fine as hello folks we're starting the program on time for once or twice here i am from louisiana we have bill mcintosh and i apologize for about two weeks ago i made a video and i said mcintyre and then right after the video was shut off I, I was kicking myself i said what are you doing you said his name wrong uh the west coast of florida uh, we have uh james madonna from uh new jersey um greetings we have william greetings and we have william from north carolina so we have new jersey North Carolina, Florida, and Louisiana, and we may be getting Alabama coming on tonight. Uh, Tanya, Tanya from uh, the Oakland East Bay area of California says she might join, but it's very hard for them to join because it's only 4.30 in California, and these people are at work. Work? Also, Holly. They yeah, work out Holly, there? <laughs> yeah. Holly Colt. Holly Colt. She would... Uh, also be interested in joining, but it's just a situation where I'm for it. So that you have to, that's understandable. The only problem is if we make it convenient for them, then we run into a, a problem where it's, in, it's so inconvenient for the East Coast because then they have to go to sleep and whatever. So it's just very hard to balance it. Have they have a problem with prime time sporting events. Well, well, I'm nocturnal, so that's not a late nights are not a problem for me. <laughs> <laughs> You're nocturnal. Edgar Winnegar. I woke up this morning at night. <laughs> I yeah. woke up this morning at uh, forty-eight. Okay, well, anyway, our topic tonight, and William has been coming up with some very interesting topics, and we're going to talk about those coming up. I wrote them down, the ones I can remember. Is it fine to drink cheap wine, and then? I noticed when I got up to go do something, I could hear y'all talking in the background and you were saying, but what does that mean cheap? You know, how do you define that? And I said, oh yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. Well, I have a wine that, oh, it's so heavy because it's three liters. Oh. Ah, New York State wine, Taylor, yes. Taylor from Canandaigua, New York. Well, that company was founded in 1880. But this particular country sellers came out in 1977 40 years ago and this is the white there's also a red and i bought this Orleans area store and it was ten dollars and 99 cents for the three liters bottle that translates to two dollars and 75 cents <laughs> 275 for a bottle of wine i think that would fall under the category of cheap well low price for, uh, for, uh, yeah low yeah Cheap is a very cheap sounding word. <laughs> I was cheap using that word because I was using that term to kind of like spur the discussion because people are reluctant to use that word. And I understand that even the, the companies will say things like value priced. What do, what do they say? Value priced up, below affordable. premium, affordable. Day wine. Value customer. For our value yeah, customers, so discounted or whatever. Y'all can tell me what y'all have. Uh, we have Jean from Jean is our uh, Haitian American friend, <laughs> formerly New Jersey, right. but now from. And Jean, you were not born in Haiti, though. No, uh, my parents were. Um, they arrived here in '74. I had they had me two years later in '76. I'm a bicentennial baby, and uh, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, my dad had two other children from another relationship, um, and they arrived here in 86, and my younger brother, of course, uh, he was born in 79. So, yeah, uh, the last I was Haiti is 30 years ago, and I'm itching to go back to, once I just want to see it, what it looks like now, you know. It's like all the photos and videos that my dad sends me. <laughs> that was during the uh, baby doc. Where in New Jersey did you, did you live? Uh, northern, uh, near Montclair, uh, about 40 minutes outside of New York City. I'm that far. I'm in Lodi, Bergen County. Okay, good, good, good. By Hackensack, Paramus, 
Off Route for uh, uh, Interstate Four. Mm -hmm. I, I did a performance with people in Montclair on uh, what is that side street with the outdoor uh, jazz? Uh, was it Chestnut uh, tr uh, Trumpets? Trumpets Jazz Club, right? Well, it, there's a side street with all quaint retail stores where they had this, when the weather's nice, they have outdoor entertainment. I'm trying okay. To if it was, oh. I think it's Chestnut Street. I believe you might be right. I think you might be right, Chestnut Street. Yes. Washington Ave is the main drag. It goes into Bloomfield. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I, I played a djembe drum, uh, African drum from uh, originally the Mali Empire. Okay. And uh, it's goat skin and mahogany, but it's loud. I mean, for okay. uh, for a low, uh, for not a high tech instrument, it's pretty loud. But anyway, I played with other people that were there, other musicians, and uh, it's a nice, it's a very nice town, Montclair. I, it I, is. I mean, it's really gotten a lot bigger. I mean, when I was there, um, I guess when I when I well, I mean, over the years when I would visit home, it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think because of the access to transportation, you know, going into the city, uh, I think now they have weekend train service now, if I'm correct, going yes. into New York. It will mostly be only during the week, you know, the work week. Um, but now they have weekend train service going into New York City out of Montclair, which I never thought that would ever happen. But uh, yeah, it's gotten a lot bigger. And, uh, you know, I like visiting, I like walking that town. You know, will always be home to me no matter what. I still have a lot of my contacts from high school are still, you know, so. Yeah, trumpets yep. are still there. Trumpets yep. are still there. Yeah, uh, and the train station that you mentioned. You know, a lot of okay, rest. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jay. <laughs> Reminiscing, man. <laughs> I rest Tonight, on. folks, are talking about Montclair. No, but um, <laughs> I like to hear all that. But anyway, we're talking about cheap wine, and is it is and the and the question of the hour is is it fine to drink cheap wine? And uh, Bill, are you still there, McIntyre? Yeah, yeah. Okay, your picture kind of froze, but that's okay. Uh, hey, Bill. Hey, William. How y'all doing? Hey, JP. Good. Hey, Jean, I don't think you'd ever met James Madonna, right? No, first time, first time meeting him. Hey, James, nice to meet you, man. Bringing back some good memories. <laughs> yeah, same here. Okay, so we'll go south to north. I already did the Taylor. I have the Taylor uh, Country Cellars White, which is 11% alcohol. Now, Jean, I think you have Paisano from Colorado. Uh-uh. I, uh, I have Colorado, but I have the Burgundy, not the Paisano uh, tonight. So I, I couldn't get the Paisano, so I had to get the Burgundy here. And um, I'm eating that right now. I'm, I'm sipping that with some... Um, some extra strong uh, ch uh, sharp cheese and some strawberries right now. I had a big lunch earlier, and uh, and I said we're well, not going to eat anything heavy. So um, tonight, so um, yeah. Um, and I this one, go, go ahead, Jay. It's like it's interesting because they say, well, it came out in 1975. It says, but it really came out in 1963. <laughs> right. It this is really the size. 40 years, 50 years, over 50 years. And that's the uh, 1.5 liter, right? Correct. 12% 12, uh, 12 alcohol by volume. And this is the stuff that my dad drank a lot growing up. You know, my mom, you know, when they have guests. And so sometimes, it, let me see that that light table bottle, uh, uh, Jay, because I think you showed it to me one time in one of the uh, this is not, pictures. This is, not the lake, this is not the lake country. This is not lake country. This is the uh, country cellars. This is a different lake. Okay. Line. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, it's right. Similar, but it's not. But that those type of wines, this and that, were the ones that were a lot that my dad would buy, and of course Manischewitz, which I I can't stand, you know. <laughs> so, but uh, but this was the these are the type of ones they would have when my dad was growing when we were growing up in the house, you know, Sunday dinners, you know, uh, this would be sitting at the table and we would and they would dilute it, I guess, and <laughs> yeah, for the for the for the kids. But uh, but uh, but but this was the stuff that I would see my dad drink, and as we got a drinking age, and I would go over to my parents' house, you know, when I was living up there and visit them, and you know, we would still have this on Sundays, you know, whatever, and a little sitting outside, you know, whatever, sipping on this or or the um the. There's also the the, uh, there's also from that same company that you're having. There's the uh. 
Gallo family burgundy, which I had, and I was really impressed with the Gallo family. Now, going on, it's similar, but not the same. It's not the same. Uh, Bill McIntosh, what do you have? I have no idea. Um, uh, when we're talking about cheap, I, I attempted to get in as closely to zero as possible, and I was able to accomplish that. Um, some, some friends, when they come over from time to time for dinner and whatnot, will bring a bottle of wine. I, 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 hey, so I'm in this for zero. Baron, Baron, Dave, Dave Baron. You're saying you have leftover wine from when people come visit. Yeah, it is a, it is a 2012 vintage re Spanish Rioja. From uh, Baron de Barbon. Mm, so, and and uh, I have zero in it, so I think it qualifies. Yeah, but on its own, on its own merits, it may not necessarily be cheap, though, right? It that could that could very well be. I'm a total. I'm I'm a total. I'm I'm in uncharted territory here. Oh well. Hey, you can't. <laughs> Experience until you get experience, right? Exactly. Up over there in North Carolina, what do you have? For cheap, I had two parameters. It had to be sold in a convenience store, and it had to be without a cork. <laughs> so my selection is Sutter Home Chardonnay. Okay. 187 milliliter bottle, which equates to about 6.3 ounces. So if it's a total disaster, it'll be a small disaster. <laughs> but uh, I looked on the website it'll here. It'll it be says Sutter, Home, William. Sutter Home Winery is the largest family-run independent winery in the United States and is the state known for the creation of white Zinfandel. It is owned. It is located in St. Helena, California, owned by the Crenchero family estates, and one of their other brands is Newman's Own. So it has a decent background to it, and we'll see what happens. That's I also right. have a backup in case I don't like this. I have a backup in the bullpen of some other style, so I can always pull it out if need be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was reading about Sutter Home. I had I was under the impression that Sutter Home had been bought out. But it says it's the family-owned independent winery. The parent company, Trinchero Estates, owns about 20 brands. Among them is Newman's Own. Right, you're right. I was wrong. I, I was under the impression that they were bought out, but in fact, family owned, and they have a long history. I do. Their wines are ubiqu ubiquitous. I go to Matherns or Walmart or uh, uh, everywhere, and they're incredible. So the homes is pretty much yeah, very good, very good stuff. You know, yeah. What's up? I'm hearing some background. Okay, let me turn my volume down. Let me turn my mind down. Is that better? We'll see. I just heard some knocking around. And so now we have Eric Thomas Metal, 75 from Massachusetts. Now we're going into New England. Now, what do you have? Well, wait, we're uh, going to get to you. We're going to get to you next in New Jersey, and then we'll get to you. Okay, James. Okay. Oh, no, what no. Do the gentleman from Massachusetts. That's okay. I'll wait. Okay. Eric, what do you what, um? I'm not drinking a cheap wine because, well, quite frankly, I got the memo after the fact I went to the liquor store. But um, probably not the cheapest, but the next cheapest thing I got and that I did buy today was uh, the Ooh, beer. Hills Bohemia. There you go. That's kind of <laughs> cheap. It was under $2 for a bottle. That, that's that. a good beer. That's a good beer, Eric. Very solid. I've not. I don't believe that I've had this beer before. I know we've done an examination on it, and I claimed I couldn't get it in my area, but it seems like it is here. So um, I won't go off too much on a tangent, but I'll let you know what I think. I was at Arturo's restaurant in a uh, Nuevo Progreso, state of Tamaulipas, three years ago, and I drank some of that with that Mexican platter. Oh, it was outstanding. That must have been good. Let me say this live on air. Sure. The, I am under the impression that I invited you to this hangout. So if you didn't get the invite on the Google Plus, 
I don't understand because I thought I had invited you. And if I did not, by some error, I, I apologize. I have to check and see, but I wasn't finding where the event stuff was. Maybe maybe trying to look up the, all this information on Google applications on cell phones isn't the best way to do it. Right, because I, I thought, because I, as a default, as a default, I always send you an invitation. I do it, you know, I say, well, maybe he won't join, but I want to put it out there for him, you know. Yeah, maybe the app does not that great. Gotten a cheap wine very easily. And let me ask you this before we go to James. What is your overall impression of so-called quote unquote cheap wine? Uh, my impression of cheap wine, um, I live in a household where in which my mother and father are very into wines and I got a whole wine cellar over that way in the basement. Um, and my impression with the cheap stuff is, is that you can find, just kind of like with beer, you can really find some hidden gems that are cheap that aren't really that bad. Now, I guess in the wine world, you the, the definition of cheap is going to change from person to person. Some people's cheap definition is going to be under $30, under $15, under $10. I think if you go, just from my experience, no, I think if you go under $10 for a bottle of wine, you might not be getting quite the best thing. But if you try to stick with maybe under 15 maybe 15 or under, or maybe 30 or under, you're going to get a better quality wine, I think. Yeah. And I think that's really cheap considering there's a lot of really high-end wines out there. Before you joined, I was showing them this bottle, it's three liters, and it's from New York, and it cost me ten ninety nine. I've seen that at the store today. Yep. James Madonna. Very prevalent, I find. Yeah. Taylor is very common in the East Coast. Okay. Yeah, my one, my grandmother on my on my mom's side used to drink a lot of a uh, Paul Masson from the Jug. That was her thing that. for a while. Okay, so now we're going to James. Okay, uh, I just want to say I, I use white Zinfandel to make my white clam sauce. So uh, mm, it, it's, okay. good with, it's good with seafood. Now, for, for I'm drinking the wine with my uh, tiki, my tiki cup, but it's not, I don't have a Mai Tai in here, so it, there's red wine. So anyway, what I, <laughs> what I normally drink what I normally get is the Australian Yellowtail Shiraz, Australian company uh, Yellowtail. Uh, but this time, hey, you got a, hey, wait a minute, that's a voodoo doll. <laughs> I, got, I got one on the wall. I could take it right off the wall. No, you got a better, mm, I, I got tea. Listen, I got a collection of gargoyles and tiki gods right over there. I could take them all out and show you. But this is not about tikis and voodoo and, you know, this is, all right, now, normally I get <laughs> hey, uh, hey. normally I get yellowtail from, from Australia, but this time I saw this poppy, which is definitely not a not sloppy. Uh, it was only uh, eleven dollars. Wow, eleven dollars poppy wine. This is a Pinot Noir, which I happen to like. Uh, it's a red wine. It's uh, I like the way it sounds, so I got it. Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir grape, and and this was eleven dollars. It, it's not a, it's not a gallon. It's not as big as uh, as Jay's Miller or um, Stutter Home or or even Carlo Rossi, which is what my relatives normally get because as an old Italian man on the label, you know what can I say, you know? But I this is not bad. I mean, they they this one is from Italy, but. The Cabernet Sauvignon I just finished was from Chile, which makes good wines too. Hmm. Chilean wine. Uh, Chile has good vineyards, and uh, I guess they, their winemakers are from Spain, I, I'm assuming. All right, this is Poppy, uh, 11 bucks. Now, with the wine, I'm going to eat this later. I found this in a local dollar store, gentlemen. Ile de France Camembert Cheese. Nice. Wow, wow, that's nice. A buck each. Now, I what couldn't. What store is this? <laughs> you never know what you're going to find in, in a refrigerated section or, or even on the shelf of a, of a dollar store. But come on, this is a famous company. 
and it's it's got weight to it. And it's camembert. It's real. And then I, you know, for a buck each, I might you know, I might go back. That's and get a good a deal. Yeah, I might go back and get a dozen of them. Ile de France, fromage. That I was I will gorge myself with uh, fungi with mold because this is usually coated with mold. Uh, I'm, the stronger the cheese, the better the flavor. Yeah, if you let this ripen, if I just let this lay around and get stinky like Limburger and mushy and, and really like like dirty socks, it, it, it's better mm -hmm. on crackers. You know, it's better on uh, whole wheat crackers or whatever sesame crackers. Uh, <clears throat> Let me actually. I haven't had any yet. I'm going to try this right now. Now, what's the pro proper pronunciation? Syrah, Syrahs. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> what's the? <laughs> My grandfather said Shiraz. Shiraz, Shiraz. 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 You know. Shiraz. 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 Yeah. What is the proper pronunciation? Yeah. Shiraz. Right. I'm gonna kick Shiraz. Shiraz. <laughs> Shiraz. Shiraz. Um, okay. I'm gonna hey. I'm gonna taste some of mine. I'm gonna taste some of mine. But before I do that, I'm gonna see if people have some comments. And I know people have been leaving comments. Taylor, Craig says good evening. I'm enjoying a glass of Taylor Marsala. Ah, I like that. And that's about 18 percent alcohol. See, better watch it. Chicken Marsala. Chicken Marsala. Yes. Rollo Acme says yeah, only if it's chili and wine. Cheers. Mm. Mighty Neck says cheers, black and whites. <laughs> Let's play. Let's blame it on the on the alcohol tonight or stay friends. Okay. Jeff Brewster says, it is fine to drink cheap wine unless we're talking Night Train Express. Never drink that. I agree. <laughs> I can't do it. No. No Night Train, no Thunderbird, no Boone's Farm. Uh, uh, what, what, what did Red Fox okay. used to say? Ripple? He's talking about Ripple and Sanford and Son. Ripple. Right. We have gone from cheap beer to cheap wine. Can't wait to see what's next. <laughs> uh, Actually, I could taste uh, spice. First of all, you could join. You could join us if you want, Doctor Dave. You can join us. And secondly, we have uh, we have something coming up on uh, June fourteenth called blended whiskey. So that's about as cheap as you're going to get in that area. Okay, uh, real fast, I'll give you my taste assessment. I'm not going to drag it out. I've been drinking this for a little while now. I did a video review and I already posted it. Uh, I'll say this much. It's a heavy bottle, but it's highly drinkable. It's not a heavy wine. Um, I'm going to make this less than two minutes. Anything First that's... point. Oh, sorry. Here, here, here's the wine. First point. That the Constellation Brands website is extremely extensive. You almost have to spend one brand because they have numerous tasting sheets, specification sheets, history sheets about each product. And, and I've noticed with experience that whatever description they give, almost identical to what you'll experience. And they said on the website that this wine in medium body, yes, it is. I find it's a little lighter body, but they say it has flavors of apple, pear, and melon. And I'm telling you right now, it does have flavors and aromas of apple, pear, and melon. And they said it would pair well with a chicken or a pasta with seafood. Yeah, they always mention. And look, yeah, they always mention. For $10.99. You can't go wrong for with three that. Can't go wrong with that. $10.99 for three liters, it is a great value, in my opinion. I'm not tasting anything foul or off or unflavored, unappealing. Uh, Do I know a lot about wine? No. I'm an expert. I'm barely an amateur. Barely an amateur. But what I've experienced, I've liked. My experience with Taylor is very positive. That's it. I would buy it again. I like it. I think it's a great value. But what do I know for wine? Okay, going to Bill. Well, once they raise the price of poppy, I'm, well, going, back to I'm going back to Yellow Tail. Right. I, I, was, I didn't expect Yellow to be so good. I thought it was so okay, good. again, I have the I have the Spanish uh, Baron de Barbon Rioja. Um, um, super fruity aroma that kind of, as it 
gets an opportunity to breathe a little bit, gets a little bit more fuller, a little bit more fragrant. Uh, I can smell sort of the tannicness of it. Um, uh, on the taste, I get a lot of black cherry in this. Uh, it is a light body wine with um, a semi dry finish, kind of sort of wet and fruity on the front end and kind of dries out on the finish. Um, yeah, super nice, super nice taste. Uh, I, I like, I happen to like black cherries anyways, and I get that note out of it. So, uh, uh, you know, a winner here for sure. And, and it was really good for you since you paid nothing for it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly for free you can't beat this cheaper than free yeah uh, yeah I'm gonna go um, to Jean. you know I'm, I'm on my um i'm on my third glass and maybe the boy say the doctors always say maybe two glasses a day keeps the doctor away but this third glass this burgundy is pretty good like i said i've had this burgundy before um very enjoyable um you taste some of the grape skins on this wine. It's it's not overly bitter. It's not overly, you know, just very mild. Even Yes, at 12%, it is a very mild, you know, red wine. Um, uh, like I said, I compare this with, you know, whether it be a nice, you know, uh, roast beef sandwich or you want to do, some, you, know, um, you know, a pot roast, you know, or maybe a nice juicy, you know, medium rare steak, you know, with some, with, with potatoes and a salad, or you add this to your recipe to your pot roast. You didn't want to throw a little wine or your ribs, you know, throw, throw, throw this wine in there, kind of give it, you know, marinate, give it some flavor. It's um, a very enjoyable wine. Anything, Italian food, whatever it is, it is perfect, full bodied. I, I've always enjoyed this. Again, this is a wine, like I said, my dad and mom have purchased many, 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 many times. Uh, on you know Sunday dinners or whatever it is you know get-togethers and you know um, it, it it just it, it doesn't disappoint at all. And John, do you think? I want to say two things. Do you think first thing? Do you think that wine would pair well with like like uh, pork ribs? Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, beef ribs are great too. Both. And maybe with oh yeah, maybe with some macaroni and cheese, baked macaroni and cheese. Yes. Yeah, not and if you have a like, very strong pungent cheese, and like I said, I've been eating this this extra sharp cheddar cheese with this in this wine. It's just been very gone gone down very well with it. Good cheese, but no cheap Velveeta or cheese was that garbage. No, like that. no, no, like nothing that. like that. Booster nothing like that. that. <laughs> I have I got my like limits. Country. I got my limits. <laughs> I had a huge fight with somebody country. about Velveeta and cheese. But it's called Red Rooster on on a craft beer. Group and uh, oh. friendship ended over Velveeta and, che and uh, Cheeseman's <laughs> argument. Oh, and that's not real cheese. I told. Yeah, I, would, I would, I would pair it with something like Country Castle Limburger. You know. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, a second question, second comment I want to make is that you know Carlo Rossi, Charles Carlo Rossi, was a real man. Ninety-four. He was like ninety. Uh, oh. He, um, his wife helped him out in the company. It was not a company, though. Carlo Rossi worked for Ernest and Julio Gallo as a salesman. Big guys in the company and uh, as a salesman, and uh, they uh, they asked him if he would like like it if um, they started a wine. And he said sure. And so he did a lot of commercials in the 1970s and 80s. For Carlo Rossi wine, but it's actually Ernest and Julio Gallo. But he did work for him. He did work for them. The picture on the wine bottle is him. He's a real person. It's not one of these made-up fake names like Betty Crocker. He's a real person. I re I remember those commercials. Like, yeah, that's right. And Ernest and Julio Gallo were real people, and they both lived into their nineties. Oh, I'm sorry. One of the brothers got killed at about age eighty, driving. A, a vehicle on their property in California on their vineyard and uh, the car the uh, vehicle wrecked and he was killed but the other brother lived to I think 98 years old something like that 
Okay. Anyway, the family still owns it. That is a, a family-owned wine company also, by the way. All right. Now, William, Sutter Home, another uh, kind of iconic, inexpensive wine brand. What do you think about this Chardonnay? This is 13% uh, alcohol. Mm. It's very straw appearance. Almost looks like a light beer. You could say this is Bud Light in this cup. It would be basically the same. <laughs> but the aroma, mm. surprisingly, the first thing I picked up was a like a toasted coconut, which was sort of surprising for me. You know, that's what I was thinking initially with a little undercurrent of like honey and then like a maybe like a sort of a fruit salad with apple and pear. That's what I got from the aroma. The taste to me is rather bland. I was expecting more sweetness. Maybe it's because I, I've not drank a lot of wine, practically none. But I was expecting, you know, there was no real like flavor hit on the tongue. It was a sort of a bland, sort of fruity apple pear and a little undercurrent of alcohol in that. So to me, it was just bland. Nothing offensive, but, uh, you know, after. You know, I like beer. I like the whiskeys. To me, this was just, it just didn't really hit a, hit home with me. Well, hey, you got to call them like you see them, right? But it, but there's nothing, you know, re repulsive about it. It's just, this is just not, this doesn't synchronize very well with my palate, I guess I might say. But I'm glad I tried you it. Have, you know, it's fine. Do you think... Do you think you'd ever be open to trying any other Sutter Home Sutter Home brands? Uh, you know, like maybe some darker wines or something like that. Uh, something darker, I think, might have more of a maybe a little more of a robust profile to it. That's I was really looking for something like, like I said there was just no flavor hit. You know, that's what I like about a whiskey is once you, you know, once once it hits the tongue, you get a hit of flavor in it. And the same way. Hey, John, with, Many of the beers, like in the 5.5 to 6% range, you get a hit of flavor initially. And I just finished an old tanker ale, and let me tell you, it's got some flavor. Right. Yes, it does. I, I, William, I was, that is that's a good beer that has a lot of flavor. I was so impressed by that. And then and then it comes with something like this, which I to me is sort of bland. So, you know, it was it was sort of a letdown, but this bottle was only a buck ninety-nine. So uh really for that pseudo home was a dollar ninety-nine? It was a 187 milliliter bottle. Most of the times it comes in a four pack, but I got this convenience store, so I only had to buy one of them. Okay, okay, I, I know those bottles. Yeah, I see those this bottles. About, yeah, my bottle Light be, Aid and some of these stores, right? Here it is. Here's the bottle. Yeah, right here. these little bottles. People buy those when they're going on a road trip. <laughs> exactly. Four of these would make up a 750 little milliliter size. A four pack would. I see. Right. Hey, y'all. Yeah. Don't you think, uh, don't you think, and this one, the Chardonnay is kind of bland, don't you think he might be interested in trying the Sutter Home, the Merlot? The Merlot, I would avoid the Sweet Red. The Merlot, probably a lot better. Anything, you know, with exception, the Red Moscato um, um, I tried from, you know, I was at a cookout. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just, just hanging out. I was drinking some water, you know, whatever. And, and I had some beer earlier and chilling. And someone offered me this red Moscato and I tried it and I was like, you know, this, this ain't bad, you know, um, those sweet reds and even had the uh, Livingston red rose. Those to me are just a little too sweet for me, you know, because they add a lot of stinking sugar to it. Exactly. Hey, uh, the, the Moscato, that's the one I see all the time. Behringer. The Baron of Red Moscato, and, uh, Red Moscato, yes. Yeah, and Sutter Home, yeah, yeah, all the time. And I think Behringer is still a family-owned uh, going on. I told him, I, I said, look, I like red wine, but I like my red wine have a little bit, uh, you know, I don't want to be too overly sweet. You know, a little bit of sweetness, but not overly sweet. And that, you know, that uh, that, that sweet, that red rose um, was a little too much for me. And I, I said, oh, I can't do it. What happened to Eric? Eric dropped off. I wanted him to tell us about this uh, Bohemia Classic. <laughs> so, hey, Bohemia Classic. Gentlemen, quick question. 
-hmm. when y'all go and been invited to a party when y'all bring a wine if y'all bring say william you you brought the you know suitor home let's just say a bigger bottle jay same thing with the tailor um uh you know um uh who's the i'm sorry the gentleman from montclair again what's his name james right uh, uh, Lord, I, yeah james james okay if you guys bought you know and the, these beers and you know bought these wines would y'all yellowtail? Would y'all get laughed at, or would y'all say, you know, hey, you know, I'm bringing this to the party. Here you go, you know, enjoy. You know, I'm bringing something because, you know, I know a few times I brought I brought Livingston to a party, and you know, it just as a gift because I I always feel if I'm invited to someone invited me to somewhere, I gotta bring something. You know, that's just that's just my nature. Maybe because I saw my mom and my dad do it. You know. They brought some stuff, you know, I said, hey, I'll bring something, you know, and, you know, and I'll, I'll bring one of these things and, you know, whatever it is. If you brought okay, these uh, wines, do you think you'll get a negative view or maybe people look at you kind of oddly like, hmm, who's this guy? I'll answer that. If I did it here in this town, in this town, if I brought Liberty Creek, uh, Barefoot. Or uh, what's the other one you named the the, the Liberty Barefoot, Creek? Barefoot, Liberty Creek, uh, Yellowtail, uh, Oak Oak Leaf, which is a Walmart brand. Um, like I said, you know, Lucky Dog or Lucky Duck, whatever that is, that is also sold in Walmart. I bought Liberty. I bought um, or Sutter Home. People would say, "Oh yeah, they drank the whole bottle." You know, nobody would say anything. Uptown New Orleans or by City Park, Park Place and all, they might City have to Park, add it. yeah. I remember yeah, City Park. Dude about it. And I'd say, oh, okay. But it's, it depends what party you're going to. I mean, around here, down the street, we go eat at this lady's house and she cooks a meal and she said, oh, I have a wine. I said, what is it? Cheap. It's called uh, Liberty Creek. Let me taste it. I tasted it. I said, uh, it, did, it doesn't taste cheap at all. Does not taste cheap at all. I told her, I said, it's going to work fine. It's going to work fine. And look, we had two priests, people there, and they went through that wine like nobody complained. Those are people with hang ups. Hey, listen, so in her case, listen. wine was very fine. <laughs> and they break the budget. Remember, I was, I was in Bo Beau Rivage. You go to Beau Rivage in, in Biloxi, Mississippi. I was there, and you know, I'm just starting throwing around. You know, it was me and you know, and, and Alexis and, and the kids, whatever, just hanging out. And um, you know, we, we we went. I went to the buffet. You know, had our you know meal, whatever. And they were serving. You know, you know, you know, you know, wine and the beer is all you know included. I said, oh, really? Okay. So when I went went up there and grabbed me, you know, uh, I think I had some snow crabs, whatever it was. Got me a you know a little glass of uh, Miller Lite in my in my poured into my my glass, <laughs> and uh, you know and I see the wine that they had. They say hey they you know they got Liberty Creek you know they got I say like, well damn you know here's here's this big major me mega casino owned by MGM and they're drinking <laughs> and pouring Liberty Creek you know all of, you know the, from the Merlot. They had the Merlot, the Cabernet, and they had the Chardonnay, and they had, uh, I think they had the Pinot Grigio. I'm not sure what they did, but, you know, you those are the three. And I said to myself, well, goddamn, you know, part of my language, but, you know, <laughs> shit. You know, if they could, if a big major casino could serve the cheap stuff, why can't I bring the cheap stuff to a party, you know, and not get ridiculed or whatever, you know? I'm picking on you, Sean, because I know you've been drinking <laughs> of this burgundy and get a little crazy. Hey, but you know what? I went to the, <laughs> the <laughs> Go ahead, Jay. I'm sorry. I went to the New Orleans Pelicans game. I went to the New Orleans Pelicans game last year and they were giving samples at, at a table and people were taking this seriously. People were not laughing at this. They were giving samples of barefoot wine. And, uh, you should have seen this line now. I never had barefoot, and by the way, I've never had a Sutter home wine in my life. I said, uh, the lady says, what do you think? I said, tastes good to me. I had the Pinot Noir and the, 
And I said, who owns, I said, who owns this company? She says, uh, oh, uh, E and J Gallo. I said, oh, okay, that's fine with me. They didn't try to dodge it. Okay, well, anyway, so let's see. I'm happy with what I'm drinking, and I'm going to cut it off after this glass. I need to, like, you know, watch things. And uh, especially since he paid no money for it. There's always going to be some way you missed place in the party so i'm gonna get i'm gonna get to james and then william was disappointed because it didn't have enough flavor profile oh and he but but william had a backup i'm, I'm pouring it right he now. had a pinch hitter i got there a pinch we go. hitter there we go this could be interesting <laughs> You know it's a class product when the name mentions a prison. That just speaks. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. Peabody laughs> Park, home in the Hamptons, Bentley or Rolls. You know, the, the prison in the name said, I got to get this. What oh, was it? Wine? 19 crimes. This is not technically a wine, but it, online in many of these group reviews, it's lumped in with the bum juice. This is Johnny Bootlegger, Sour Grape. <laughs> I've never heard of this. Neither have I. Here's the bottle. Johnny Bootlegger. Johnny Bootlegger. I heard they 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 watered it down with formaldehyde back in Prohibition. <laughs> That's what I heard. I don't know how true. William. Yeah, William. Who makes this odd ball <laughs> item? <laughs> Uh, I, this is 12% alcohol. This is a 200 milliliter bottle. The the parent company is uh, a huge uh, Gelasso, I think. But it's it's made in the United States. Uh, but this particular brand is, this flavor is Sing Sing Sour Grape. <laughs> now you can drink this while you get acquainted with your new roommates. Alcatraz and call it the rock. You know, people drink this, then they go yeah. windsurfing. <laughs> I live in LA, yeah. You so know. This will be quite different. I'll take a sip of this. I got a feeling it's going to be a little bit sweeter for one thing, but. Cheers to the, all the disaffected and downtrodden. Yeah. Uh, Boone's Farm, I have my limit with Boone's Farm. I have my limit with uh, MD20. I know, Jay, you did a review of MD20, but I, I got my limit on that. So. Yeah, MD2020 uh, red wine, that was um, uh, a body hurt. Yeah. I would think Boone's Farm. I mean, Tis. Um, I, I don't know if any of y'all get Tis Tisdale in your area, but Tisdale's one that is, you know, I, I guess you consider me. I don't want to say he's on the same level as Boone's Farm, but it, it's decent. But it's, you know, many kind of feel the same same effects. You know, I guess you know. But it's gone, gone. The funny thing about MD twenty twenty. People, these bums, you know, we say these bums drank it, you know, and then uh, you see it everywhere, and then they have the old the wild Irish rose. Yeah. The thing about those two wines is, if you want to call them wines, they are actually owned by major companies. But the funny thing about those two products is that they're they're more expensive than what I'm drinking tonight. <laughs> mm. The Taylor, the Taylor White, the the country seller's white. Is a good deal cheaper, but of course you can't tuck that in your in your pants no. when, you're, when you're walking around downtown, right? You can't tuck a three liter bottle in your pants. You can't. Okay, now William, what do you think about this beer based wine? It is. Like, well, I, if the other lacks sweetness, this certainly doesn't. This is syrupy, extremely sweet. Reminded me of a hot summer day where you get the uh, grape snow cone. You get the cone, they put the ice in, then they pump the, the syrup on top of it. Mm -hmm. That's what it that's what it tastes like. There's absolutely no booziness to this at all. And at 12%, a, a person that was so inclined could drink this stuff like soda pop and get 
wasted out of their mind yeah. in a short amount of time. It is a sneaky product designed for a certain drinking segment. But uh, so I got my sweet too satisfied after the Chardonnay. But that's what this is. This is just uh, alcohol candy. That's what it is. <laughs> that's all it is. It's alcohol candy. Not repulsive. Imagine how you would feel the next. Imagine how you would feel the next. To have a sweet tooth, but that's what it is. Right. And, but imagine how you'd feel the next day. I, I wouldn't want to imagine, but I can <laughs> guess it wouldn't be pleasant. But now James is going to wrap it up, uh, and then we'll have a little mini discussion at the end. What do you think about what you're drinking, James? You enjoying it? Well, it's 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 slightly lighter than a burgundy. It uh, the billboard. Well, the advertisement in the liquor store, and by the way, I saw Tillsdale Tillsdale there. Um, it mentioned that it has um, certain specific fruits, spices, and that probably accounts for the slightly lighter color, similar to the Paisano, comparing the Paisano to the Burgundy, you know. But will I get it again? No, I will go back to the Yellowtail Pinot Noir or Shiraz or Shiraz, whatever you want to call it, because it's, uh, I don't like sweet things. You know what I mean? I don't, I, I, I like a drier wine. Um, and, uh, I'm going to go back to the, as far as uh, 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 an economical, high quality wine, I think I'm going to, I'm not going to get it, the poppy again. I'm going to go back to the Yellowtail, Pinot Noir, and Shiraz. And, uh, and in honor of the gentleman from Tampa, Mr. Uh, McIntosh, I am going to try the Angry Orchard Hard Cider. I keep on seeing those damn advertisements. I'm going to give it a shot. Okay. Um, Does that come from Tampa? Yeah. Yeah. You from Tampa? I'm from Tampa. Mr. No, McIntosh. No, angry. Was it, angry. Was it the McIntosh apples? Your last name is McIntosh, huh? Yeah. That's right. Bill, Bill is from Angry Tampa, uh -huh. Orchard. All right. Triple Tiki number Wait. one. Damn. Oh boy! Double tiki, a pair of tiki's on a date. <laughs> All right, number two. All right, and uh, a tiki uh, uh, on top of the head of another tiki. Nice. All right. Yeah, I keep on seeing. Thank you, thank you. I keep on seeing those Angry Orchard commercials, and uh, I'm, I didn't want to try it because it was it was nine bucks for hard cider, but. Like, you know, in honor of you, I'll splurge, and, uh, and I'll give it a shot. Give it a shot. Tell me what you think. Yeah, I will. I will. And uh, yeah, as far as this goes, I think it's a bargain for $11, but, you know, uh, um, I grew up drinking Sutter Home Taylor, Carlo Rossi, uh, um, the, the Gallo wines. I, I remember Carlo Rossi's commercial. But then again, I also remember the original Colonel Sanders commercial, you know, with him. He was alive when he was alive. So uh, not not George Harrison, not the guy with the tanning, you know, that reflected. That's, no, that's the that's the extra crispy Colonel. <laughs> mm. I'm surprised he's well, still alive. But. Well, the last uh, the last uh, final comment is trying to drink cheap wine. Yes. I would say yes. yes. Uh, Bill? Absolutely. Without question, I don't see anything wrong with it. You know, bring it to a party again. You're bringing something that the host is not paying for. Why should they come care and complain? You know? Don't put a gift horse in the mouth. Exactly. <laughs> but then again, cheap wine is not necessarily bad. So it might end up. Yeah. Right. I'm 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 going to enjoy every sip of this Taylor uh Country Cellars white. I can assure you, William. I looked online and I confirmed the uh the parent company for the Johnny Bootlegger is Geloso Group in Rochester, New York. They also uh Geloso also makes the Mons Abbey Ales in the beer category. And they also make the Club Tales, which is a, another malt beverage variant. 
And I think the parent company actually is in Canada, but the Rochester, they handled the American operation for it. But it's amazing that something like this, this took me back to being like a 10 year old kid. It's just sweet and candy like, but yet the booziness, you know, there's no booziness whatsoever to this thing. And it's uh, Which makes surprisingly, it very although it's extremely sweet, it's not cloying like some malt liquors that I have drank. So it's just, it's innocuous, but it can be deadly in the wrong hands. <laughs> but uh, So like the Prohibition era that they're talking about, Johnny mm. Luther and the stuff out of a bathtub that was made. So uh, I, think, I, think that's, the theme. I think that's the product strategy with some of that stuff. But they've, they've done it well then. Make it, make it super sweet, make it high alcohol. And I, I think that's kind of the, 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 the product category. For people that don't even like alcohol. Exactly, yeah. But they like the buzz. Yep. And this, and this will get you there. They don't drink for the flavor, for the flavor, the quality of, of the enjoyment of drinking an alcoholic beverage. They, people, for people who drink for the buzz. If you huh. drink enough of this, you'll see the girl with far away eyes. You know, they, you know uh, I, I saw a banner in a bar in a pub one time that I cracked me up. It says, I drink only to make you more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it does, that was, it, yeah, they always look better at closing. We have a uh, message from Holly. Yeah, guys, what's up? It says, uh, Holly says, hey, Dad, just got home, wanted to say hi, but it looks like technical condition. It just keeps hanging on the same part. That Holly should click on the link that I sent. Just click on the link I sent you, and when you on Facebook, don't click click on the Facebook link, and then shut off all the other tabs, and it should work. That's, That's what, what I did with me. I logged off. All That's the what I did. One, one thing I would ask Holly, and you can comment either Without here or on Holly, friend, Chief One. Now, um, uh, here's some upcoming. <laughs> look at what. Here's some upcoming. Uh, here's some upcoming uh, examinations or whatever you want to call them. Um, okay, I think it's not going to work for me. But um, in two weeks. Two weeks. We're going to look at a, a, a very common topic. I think a lot of people might want to watch this. Only ask comments and questions. I get is. About pouring beer, but interestingly, they usually don't start the comment with hey, "you pour the beer." Here's an idea I have. They usually start off with "Hey, idiot!" African beer, but uh, that's usually the way they start the comment. That's a little harsh, don't you think, Ronald? Very harsh. I'll ask them. I'll respond because you know I made a video about responding to comments. I'll respond and say, what do you mean? What's wrong with my pouring method? But I never get a response, a second response. That should be a very interesting topic in two weeks, pouring beer. Three weeks from now, from now we're going to really go down the rabbit hole. The topic in three weeks is called whiskey, a blend. A blend. Now, you can, you can read into that any way you want to. In one is month, we have sent... Whiskey, a blend. When? Ronald, is just, the uh, how to pour your beer, is that just bring what you want deal? That seems like a very innocuous topic, but this is a topic that causes family divisions, divorce, <laughs> <laughs> kidnapping, terrorism, and everything else. Pouring beer. You would not imagine how angry people get about pouring beer. So June 14th, we have Whiskey A Blend. And if you look up on Google or Yahoo, type in Whiskey A Blend, you'll see what I'm talking about. First, we have Samuel Adams Summer Ale. I think everybody would enjoy Samuel Adams Summer Ale. June 28th, we have a topic that William uh, devised. It's a topic William came up with. It's called Malt Liquor Mount Rushmore. Ooh. Malt liquor, Mount Rushmore. If you had to put four heads on Mount Rushmore, but they were malt liquor, what would they be? 
Very cool. Yeah, I got a, I got a question. A fifth topic before we leave. A fifth topic, Ju July fifth, is chance beer. What is a beer you tried once and you hated or disliked, but you tried it a second time and you realized that maybe it wasn't the beer; it was you. Problem: It wasn't the beer. What, William? Right, it's uh, a beer that you give a second chance to, and you you gain an appreciation for it. And eventually, you started to like it. You know, so like give anything a second chance. You said something. Williams, you said you made a comment for me. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I had a question for, for William uh, in South in North Carolina. Uh, what is your opinion, uh, if you ever tried it, of uh, Midnight Moon Moonshine, the one, uh, the commercially uh, produced moonshine? I have not had that one. I saw it in the, our local ABC stores, but I haven't had that or know the Georgia Moon or any of those products. That's something on my horizon. I would like to try some of those. I started with a corn whiskey. I bought a bottle of 90 proof corn, excuse me, 90 percent corn whiskey to start me on the something that's different from the bourbons. And from there, I probably will divert off into the uh, what's, it, what's called the white dogs, the moonshine products. Uh, there's one made by... Uh, they're they're becoming quite popular sort of have a a cult following so that's that's something i want to explore pretty soon because i tried a couple of them i tried the blueberry flavored midnight moon and the cherry flavored at my brother-in-law's house and uh they were quite good the cherry was a little sweet the blueberry was 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 okay um i think a famous former race car driver uh junior johnson he, he, he started the company, Midnight Moon. Right. He's involved. He, he's a sort of a consultant. But uh, I think the gist of the idea was to get him behind the product, which would help the marketing of it. Did you actually eat any of the infused fruit that's in the jar? Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and we were, uh, I, I really started uh, banging like a machine on that. Well, you know, it is so saturated. They, they tell you on the website, don't drink, don't eat the, product, the fruit that's in the jar, but naturally that'll make everybody want to eat it. Well, if you were a really good looking woman, have her eat the fruit. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that, alcohol is the greatest aphrodisiac for women, not for men. It works every time. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right, sir. <laughs> well, uh, well, a good time to uh, shut down the, the uh, examination. <laughs> Uh, please say hi to every. Holly says, "Please say hi to everybody from me." So I want to say hi to everybody to you from Holly. And says, "No worries, Jay. It happens." And Holly just discovered, just discovered your channel and joined your videos also. And Bart, yeah, I like to watch Holly's. Um, it's very enjoyable. So here I am saying, "This happy hour." If you're into progressive politics. You might enjoy progressive discussions. <laughs> That's me. I want to I talk about progressive beer or progressive wine. No Jean politics. Jean-Pierre has a channel where he does a beer ramble, and I do Louisiana beer reviews, and then I do these challenges like I have coming up tomorrow. I have a uh, – this is uh, uh, oh, Old Granddad. And William, who don't have channels, but they like to join ours. And then we have Eric, who disappeared and never told us what he thought about the uh, Bohemia Classica. So believe me, I'm going to jump on his case. But he'll probably talk to us about that on Beer Talk, right, uh, Jean? <laughs> Definitely. A little bit, little by little, yes. But yeah. <laughs> so Jean, I can see Jean has very much enjoyed his burgundy tonight. <laughs> But, uh, we won't. Yeah, no sports on tonight, so I might as well watch a documentary. <laughs> hey, Jay, a documentary on our our favorite band, Fleetwood Mac, Rumors. So uh, I'm about uh, on, on access on Access TV. I have recorded it. So I'll make that going off air. Is that second that was hand a band. news? I'm your second hand news. 
interestingly, they spent so much time working on the album, they, they listened to the, the master tapes so much that the tapes began to deteriorate. So they had to actually create new master tapes. <clears throat> tapes began to... Uh, to um, you would have to listen to a master tape to destroy it. This is not a Memorex. William knows what I'm talking about. Right. Oh, right. it's going to deteriorate in two or three listenings. They they went over those master tapes so extensively that the master tapes began to deteriorate. The album that was put together, and it took an entire year, a nervous breakdown in every member of the band. But on the other hand, it was one of those few albums that scored five out of five stars in almost every uh, so it doesn't happen too much. The only problem is, put up. Don't expect something better to come after it. It ain't going to happen. James has some odd item to show us in the last second. Dr. McIntosh and, and group. This is a hand-carved incense burner from the island of Bali. Nice. Uh, That's what I need to get around the house. <laughs> it reminds me of... Uh, well, I do a home cleansing ritual with certain incense using this. It's a, It has a, a Day of the Dead, which are the holidays, celebrated by... Uh, anyway, without getting into the history of Day of the Dead. But anyway, I just uh, wanted to show something of interest. Uh, and, uh, the, the people who uh, start off the message with the word idiot, uh, I could lay... Uh, I should lay a little curse on, on you, you know, so you learn your lesson. Be nice. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, me. Clearly, clearly, you have all the accessories to handle that curse stuff, James. I like it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, all the viewers who, with Hey Idiot, learned how to pour beer, now they're under a curse. So, oh, well. Sorry. <laughs> Blame me. No, nah, this is all good luck. Good luck for the show. You know, uh, uh, viewers, rating. Right, yeah. uh, hey, right, but here comes. All right. Hey, here comes some major Gregory. Here comes some major Gregory. All right, 